Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHMS Coyote Podcast. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five-star review. And we are here with Petey and Craig. We're live at the Four Peaks 8th Street Pub. We got a lot of stuff on tap today. Max didn't like that at all. But he's the king of dad jokes, um, both literally and figuratively. Um, if you're watching on YouTube right now, you see this oh, thing of jug. log cabin maple jug. syrup. You see Craig's beer bong. That My healthy. chuggler. And uh, Petey's still uh, yeah, it's hairless. A yeah. So, uh, Who are you? Exactly. We yeah. will get to our bets later in the show at the end of the show. Um, shout out. We got Charles, Elliot, Kenny, Chris off to the side here at Four Peaks. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for coming by. And we have a lot to get to today. Um, but before we get into any of it, let's start off with the most exciting thing. Okay. And it's that we have a new t-shirt. What? A new t-shirt what? in the locker. Ah. It's kind of Cody 2.0, if you will. Are you, you sure will. it's not a Suns t-shirt again? It's not. It is orange, but it's not a Suns shirt. Um, we are <laughs> so excited to have collabed with Four Peaks on this shirt. It's PHNX Coyotes crossed with Four Peaks. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. If you're not, go to phnxlocker.com right now. Order this shirt. If you've been waiting to become a diehard and you want your free shirt at sign up, you can get this one. Amazing details on this shirt. It looks like the Coyotes reverse retro. And if you're looking real closely, you can see the Four Peaks Mountains at the base of Cody. Um, so really cool details there. We're super excited about this shirt. Um, and you can grab yours at the phnxlocker.com. Plus, join what? us for our season. There's more? Yeah, there's more. Join us for our season wrap party at Four Peaks A Street Pub before the Coyotes season finale on April 13th, starting at 5 p.m., Wear your new PHNX Coyotes and Four Peaks t-shirts and you'll receive drink specials all night long. Really looking forward to this one. Uh, kind of celebrating getting through the end of this year, even though it wasn't too bad. Maybe. I don't know. But really excited about this. So get your shirt. Wear it there. We're excited to see you all there. So lots of exciting news. Buddy. I like I'm press send. Like I'm in. You're going to get lit? Uh you know, your coy- coyote shirt. I'm getting get my lit. orange. Yeah, actually. I might, I might my order sit- this shirt live on air right now. I might too. Send <laughs> Honestly, it. I'm so excited about this. Send it. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad we started with something fun because before we get into the rest of the fun, we have to do the one thing that <sighs> we don't really want to talk about, but we will because it is a thing that is going on. It's a thing. A thing. <laughs> we have, can we build a goddamn arena yet? We'll just be done with this. Please. So. <laughs> so tired of these shows where you talk about the arena. The City of Phoenix Sorry. Aviation Department has filed legal action against Tempe. Quote, the plan Tempe residential developments failed to protect Sky Harbor and the community. Craig, I'm going to give it all. The floor is yours. Haven't we covered all this already? Is Feels it, like in, it. Is it literally in the IJ on the City of Phoenix's website what's allowed? Isn't exactly what the coyotes are building allowed under the IJ. Oh, yes, it is. It is. We have covered all of this before. What is this about? Why now? Why the timing with the vote coming really soon? Interesting timing. What's at play here? Oh, I think the airport wants to expand. I think they want assurances that they can expand the runway. I don't want to talk about this, guys. I'm so tired of this stuff. I don't think this suit has any merit whatsoever. Neither does the city of Tempe. I don't think they're going to comment on it. I don't think anybody thinks this suit has any merit. It's just another bullshit hurdle that the Coyotes have to cross before they get this arena built. I'm tired of dealing with this stuff. I think most of the inf- information is already out there. You can read it for yourself. You can read what the IGA says. There's no no sense in us rehashing it. I don't know what this does to... The timeline, I, it doesn't change the vote, obviously. The vote is still going to happen on May 16th. Could this potentially delay financing, other things? Maybe. We'll see how it plays out. I don't know. Hopefully this thing just gets tossed out quickly because it, I, I don't think it has any merits. It's just for Coyote fans, I feel you. I feel you. I was up till 1 in the morning. Believe it or not, there are a lot of people that are still up at 1 in the morning and willing to talk. Just not doing PD. more work on this. <laughs> yeah, Am I going to write a story on it? Not right now. Not really. Um, it was nice to finally back, hear back from the Tempe first folks on some things. I appreciate the responses. Um, I'm not sure I got complete responses on some of those things, but it was nice to actually have communication because I've been reaching out for a while. But as far as a story, I don't know. I, 
we, we all know the details of this already. It's just frustrating. The vote is less than two months away now. And suddenly this surfaces. Yeah, for me, it's a couple things. Timing is a big deal here. Yeah. This is about timing. We've heard as this has gone through the process, everything's fine. We've been through the airport argument. Everybody's talked about the city council. We've been through everything. We were fine. We were fine. But now we're not fine because the vote's in a month. And we're trying to delay this to make this a more difficult process. That's unfortunate. Um, to your point, I think the law and the, and the, the, the documents are what they are. And, and I don't think this is the problem. I don't think the Coyotes see this is a problem. I don't think Tempe sees it a problem. The one thing I want to say about it before we move on is Coyotes fans, this team's not moving to Houston. They're not moving to Quebec. They're not moving with or without the lawsuit, with or without this vote. This team's not going anywhere. This is plan A of B, C, and D. And A is, a, they're all in on A. Don't, I don't want to think that they're wavering from Tempe. They want the building here. They want this Ted to, to happen. But this team's not leaving. Like I just want to get that narrative out of the way first. My gut tells me that we won't go to plan B. Yeah, I, same here. I, I don't think this is going to... I think this is just a delay thing that where we might get a delay. I mean, you know what? Honestly, we might not. It might not have enough merit to even be heard. We'll see. It's just frustrating for me because we this issue was literally resolved. And it felt like last night this all comes out and you're just like, really? Like, that was my gut reaction was, really? Like, we're doing this again? I don't have any proof, but I think the city of Phoenix wants out of the IGA. And I think that's what's at the heart of this. I think they want out of the IGA. And good luck with that. Sorry. You don't get that. Yeah. Maybe you can negotiate something else, but the IGA is there. It's a legally binding document. Yeah. So, and it says what it says. It restricts you in the ways it restricts you, and it restricts the Coyotes in the way it restricts them. And they've they've played within those parameters. In fact, they've made a lot of concessions. It but is what it is now. What, the, Craig, the, the Coyotes are following the IGA on this. Yes. Right? They're within the parameters of yes. the legal document of what they're yes. allowed all to do. all of which was hashed out in council chambers, by the way. We heard all that. Done. So, yeah. so they followed the law. They follow the letter of the IGA. They follow the guidelines that are written down by law between Phoenix and Tempe in their IGA. Yep. Okay, that's. I, I don't understand what the problem is then. I don't get it. We don't like you. You don't like us. We we can build, but you can't. Na 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 na. Is that how it is? I mean, that's. I mean, that's Tempe's reaction. You, you've seen some of the, the the officials. Randy Keating was on Twitter saying that we're just basically being bullied by the bigger city again. Right. That's been happening for yeah. years. And he's right. I mean, that you. We all know the 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 story of the. The Cardinals Stadium. It was the same thing. It was the same supposed issue, and they they drove the Cardinals west. Well, yeah. I, I don't. Tempe's grown up a lot since then, yeah. and I, I don't think they're going to put up with it anymore. All right. Well, I think we should move on from this. We need to address I mean, it. Yes, if you need, please. If you need any more information, it's all on Craig's Twitter at Craig S. Morgan. Well, it's all on the Tempe website, that right, too. or the Phoenix website. If you want to read the IGA, it's literally on the City of Phoenix's website, so you can see the parameters yourself. Very true. So you can check all of that out. Um, but let's talk about the real reason we're here today. The reason we had planned before all of this to went down. Beer? It's not for Craig to chug okay. a beer and for me to take a shot so of I mean, I don't have log to? cabin. By the way, <clears throat> that smells like you wouldn't believe from and here. And it's on my hands. Like, like sticky, this is torture. Sweet, that should be my, that should that be my sticky, punishment. That sweet smell Me just having to smell syrup. it the entire <laughs> time. I'm going to get <clears throat> you log cabin perfume for your birthday. No, thanks. I will say... Did you? Where's the gift receipt? Thank you. Um, all right. Well, the reason we're really here today is mm -hmm. to talk about some NHL awards. Um, obviously, they're going to be the week of the NHL draft. I believe June 26 is the date. But as soon as the regular season wraps up is when we'll start learning the nominees because mm -hmm. these awards are regular season awards. Um, and I know we talk about Matias Michelli almost nightly on our show. And he's starting to get a little bit of national recognition, but I feel a bit. I feel that it's not enough. So we have gathered here today to speak directly <laughs> to you, America. <laughs> just kidding. Dearly really beloved. <laughs> we are gathered here today <laughs> to make a case for Matias Michelli to be considered for the Calder. And I'm not saying he necessarily even has to be voted the winner. We've seen what Maddie Beneers has done this year. Um, he's the favorite on BetMGM right now. But Matias Michelli deserves to be in the Calder conversation, and and everyone who votes on this award should know why. So who wants to start? I can start. I mean, first of all, we talk about Matty Beniers probably winning it still. Are we saying this if Matias Michelli doesn't get hurt and miss, what was it, 18 games? I would say we're not because Matias Michelli is pr he would producing have more at a higher point He would have more rate. points than him, without question. Yeah, he's, he's got the most points per game of any of the rookies in the race. He's got the most assists. 
I think the 18 games is going to hurt him. The missed miss games are going to hurt him in the end. Matty Beneers is probably going to win this award, but I don't have anyone else above Matias Michelli. I've got him number two right now in my Calder voting. I'm not even sure I'm supposed to be saying that, to be honest, as an actual voter in the uh, Calder Trophy. But some of the other guys that come out, like Mason McTavish, I don't get it at all because he's not a responsible two-way player. Uh, the goaltenders that are in the Skinner is the one that's been coming up a lot lately, or Logan Thompson in Vegas. Those are the two guys that are mentioned. They've both been good. I don't think either one of them has been outstanding, like award worthy. When I look at their numbers, when I look at the deep analytics, and I know there's like we, we talked about this with Kevin Woodley on the show the other day. Um, the numbers that he looks at are adjusted save percentage, expected uh, goal saved above expected. Part of the problem with those is there's models, right? So there's variance in the numbers. Like if you look at one side, it's it's some it's up here. Another one, another side, it's down here. Both of those guys, both of those goaltenders, have done well. I just don't see them. I don't see anything eye popping from them. Anything that says you're an award finalist. Matias Michelli has done that. We and maybe part of that is bias. We've seen him play a lot, but I wish other people had seen him play a lot. He's not on ta- national TV. He's on the West Coast, so you don't see a lot of games back east where a lot of the voters are. And you don't see how special this player is with the puck on his stick. And not just that, with the, with the playmaking. He started to shoot a little bit. Andre joked about that other night. He's a complete player. This is a very good two-way line that he is playing on. They play responsible hockey. And if you look at their metrics, it backs that up. And one of the things you just brought up is the two-way player. So you look at the, the list right now that I consider the top three, and you throw in Mason McTavish. Mason McTavish is a minus 14 plus minus. Matias Michelli is a plus five. So you, you're talking about a, a plus player five on this team, right? On this team, yeah. yes, yeah. That's a team that, and that should be taken into consideration. It should be, and I and I think here, here's it. You look at some the last two forwards to win this award are Kirill Kaprizov, and since he won it, they changed the the age range in the award, and then Elias, Elias Peterson, Elias, 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 Pe- Elias Peterson. 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 Okay, both of those two guys were nearly a point per game player. Those two forwards, there is no forward right now, right in the rookie call the race that is putting up a point per game. They're just not there. It's a down year. It is a down year yeah. for the Calder, and and I I look when you, I probably have to say this is going to be Matty Beniers Beniers year. Yeah. You're looking at a guy that the team is going to make the playoffs. The team has improved from where they were a year ago, and he's been a part of that. And he adds to their offense. He's a plus nine, and he's almost he's not he's similar to where Matias Michelli is in points per game. Actually, Matias is is the best in the league. What I think needs to happen over the next seven games. Matias Michelli just needs a couple more goals. Yep. He doesn't yeah. need five. He doesn't need ten. He needs two. And I think just even those two goals make the difference for me. I, I still think it's going to be Matty Beneers, but I think Matias Michelli deserves to be and should be number two in the Calder voting, which would be phenomenal for a team that was predicted to finish last. Yeah, absolutely. So Matias Michelli in 2021-22 played 23 games with the Arizona Coyotes. In those games, he had one goal, five assists, or six points. In just over double that number of games played this season, he has 10 goals, 33 assists for 43 points. So that alone is is convincing enough for me. Then you look at him in the context of the other players, and we talked about you know the 18 games that he missed. He played, he's played 14 fewer games than Matty Beniers, and only has seven fewer points. Yeah. yeah. So you like you mentioned, if he had played in those 18 games at the rate he's producing, you have to imagine he'd be the rookie point leader, and then he couldn't be ignored. And keep in mind, earlier this season, we were dealing with the fact that you couldn't even see Matias Michelli's face on NHL.com. <laughs> Until dis- somebody shamed them. <laughs> There's so much disrespect for the for the Coyotes, and, and I understand that. We're used to that. But when a player is deserving of an award or consideration for award, do your due diligence and do it. And you can't, you can't even say it because Seattle's on the West Coast, Anaheim's on the West Coast, all these guys who are also in the talk. That's true. They're on the West. So Skinner I don't, and Thompson, too. So Everybody's in so the West. So I don't want to hear your East Coast bias, and I don't want to hear your big market bias either. Look at Matisse Michelli, look what he's done, and consider him for Calder. Here, Matty Beneers is a center, and I think that's going to weigh in his favor in the end. Because and it's and a, somebody in the chat mentioned it's that It's a more difficult well. position to play. as more responsibility, and as long as he maintains his lead, and is the rookie points leader. He's going to win this award. But if Matias Michelli is not number two, I'm going to have words with some people. Because I, 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 I honestly, it, it, look, you can have difference of opinion, but I just, I think this is a matter of not paying attention if, if he's not getting that kind of love. Agreed. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's crazy when you pull up his odds to win the Calder on BetMGM. I was actually shocked yeah. this morning because I've seen 
his odds on some other sports books, and they're a little bit different. But on BetMGM, I pulled it up this morning. So you got Maddie Beneers. Uh, up top, minus 900. So, like, kind of the runaway favorite. Yeah. And that's totally fine. We're all yep. kind of on the same page. But then, Stuart Skinner, Mason McTavish, Owen Power, Cole Perfetti, Wyatt Johnson, Logan Thompson, Pete... Well, who is this guy? Kochekov? Who is that? <laughs> yeah, he's the goalie. Carolina. Kalen yeah. Addison? I don't, I've never even yeah. heard of him. Sorry. Ken Johnson, Jack Quinn, Jake Sanderson, Shane Pinto, who... Isn't he injured? Mm. What place um, is with TSA? Noah Cates. I'm still going. Caden Gooley, JJ Paterka, Fabian Paterka, yeah. Zetterlin, and then Matthias Michelli at plus 10,000. So what place is that if you count them all? Um, That's insanity, one, two, by the way. Three, four, well, no, this would be one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. But 17. 17 plus 19. Well, no, because some of the odds are the same. Okay. I but, sense the tinge of disrespect in that J.J. Paterka. What yeah. are we doing? I've never heard of him. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, this is an Arizona Sabre. Coyotes podcast, not a Buffalo Sabres one. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> um, but listen, all of this is to say that you could really win yourself some money if for some reason Matias and Shelley wins Calder yes. at plus 10,000. 10, are you kidding Can me? Can you bet on him to place? Like at horse racing? Uh, oh, not right know. now on BetMGM, but... Um, maybe maybe we'll see once the, the finalists that's are finalized. That's literally embarrassing. It's crazy. Yeah, like he has it, twice as many points MGM. as half the guys on that yeah, list. Yeah, that is embarrassing. We're, I know we're new partners, but maybe but. reevaluate because I'm a little upset about this. But like we said, it's good value. Mm. Um, so if you want to, you know, th- throw even throw like five dollars on it you can win a ton of money um <sighs> on bet mgm so check it out bet mgm they usually have like really great odds the best odds of all the sports books um and we're really really excited to be partnered with bet mgm and if you haven't signed up yet use bonus code phnx and you'll get up to a thousand dollar first bet offer on your first wager here's how it works download the bet mgm app and sign up using bonus code phnx deposit at least ten dollars and place your first wager on any game and you'll receive up to a thousand dollars in bonus bets if your bet loses just make sure you use bonus code phnx when you sign up and to kick off this partnership we're doing a massive watch party this saturday at 2 p.m at the bet mgm sportsbook at state farm stadium come watch the last stages of college basketball play out and they'll have food and beverage specials giveaway and massive tvs to watch the game on if you register and place your first bet with promo code phnx when you sign up you'll receive a PHNX shirt. So that's quite a deal. And before we play the disclaimer, I don't want to forget, I'm going to let Sean give his pick of the week. Sean, what do you got? Ooh, um, my pick of the week, um, I know this is a hockey podcast, but I don't know if you know this, uh, baseball is back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, specifically, the Arizona Diamondbacks who are playing, <coughs> excuse me, who are playing the um, – you might have heard of them, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Pretty good at baseball. Um, I don't care, though. My pick of the week is going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks money line at plus 145 Ooh. to beat the Los Angeles Dodgers on opening day. I love it. Did Chris hear that? Risky. Pick of the week, pick Diamond of the week. D-backs, D-backs money line. Yeah, let's go. I love it, Sean. Chris, the world's biggest Diamondback yep. fan. Um, all right. Agrees <laughs> so if you want Sean. to tail Sean, you can do so on Bet MGM. And now, listen to Shane. Talk about the disclaimer. Disclaimer, 21 plus to wager. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. U.S. promotional offers not available in Washington, D.C., Mississippi, Nevada, New York, and Ontario. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Colorado, D.C., Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Maryland, Mississippi, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369, New York. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP-ARIZONA, 1-800-522-4700, Kansas, Nevada, 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts, 1-800-BETS-OFF-IOWA, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help, Michigan. All right, and we're here at Four Peaks. Really happy to be here. Really happy that I have this wow wheat beer that I can wash my uh, maple syrup shot later with. I really can't even happy call that it I have maple this IPA. Syrup. Yeah, Craig has an IPA, and Petey, where's your? Oh, Petey's glass is empty. What were you drinking? Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's a wow day. It's it is a wow day. It's Sun is shining. Wow it's a wow day. Get that little orange. It's almost like fruit juice. So cheers, everyone, if you're watching at home. Craig, are you going to have a little sip right now? Is that okay? Is that allowed? Wait, can, I can you cheers this? me though? Yeah, I can cheers. Cheers. You. Don't cheers empty glass. It's bad luck. I'm not doing it. Look at that. That's it. How um, is it? 
Uh. Woo, can't wait for him to chug that later. Um, mm. But we're really excited to be out Tasty. here at Four Peaks. Like we said, got a bunch of people over here off to the side. We appreciate you all for coming out. And we'll be back uh, next month for the NFL draft because the Arizona Cardinals have a new coach, a new GM, and currently the third pick in the draft. So the best way to take in this pivotal moment and the rest of the NFL draft on April 27th is at Four Peaks 8th Street Pub. You must be 21 or older to drink and enjoy responsibly, but you don't have to be 21 to come to Four Peaks because they have amazing food as well. I had the pulled pork sandwich. Today. I went barbecue chicken good. pizza. Mm. Very good. Sean and I split lunch today. Yes, you did. Your we little got, date. We Love got the it. tendies and the tendies. dips. Yep. Yep. Good Love stuff. It. Good stuff. Um, all right. We're going to talk about another guy who should be considered for an NHL award. And that is Clayton Keller um, to be considered for the Masterton Trophy, which is awarded to someone who exemplifies perseverance yep. in, in the game, right? Yes, yeah, um, and dedication to the game of hockey. Yeah, I, yeah, should, I, I should have had that pulled up in front right. of me, but it's I know it's all right just. because PHWA um, voters don't follow the guidelines anyway for the Masterton. Yeah, <laughs> they remind us every year it's not a comeback trophy, and often it's a comeback trophy. Um, but yeah, perseverance, like. Who personifies perseverance in the game of hockey more so than Clayton Keller this year when he broke his leg into literally snapped the his bone? Femur. His, his femur. The biggest yeah, bone the on biggest the human bone body. The biggest bone on the leg. Yep. Yep. Snapped it into late in the season. Talked to him today. Talked to him for a long time. We'll have a, a lengthy story on Clayton Keller on Sunday. But here's one thing that I wanted you guys to think about. Like the, for his first question that he asked after the injury was, Am I going to be able to play hockey again? That's what's wow. going through his mind. That's crazy, right? And a few days later, he was telling people in his life, including his dad, I'll be back for the first game of the season. <laughs> Just flip the switch. And he did it. He did it. And not only has he done it, he's about to break Keith Kachuk's single season record for points in a season by a Coyote. I'm astounded what Clayton Keller has done. When you put it in the backdrop of that injury, what he had to deal with, what he had to do just to get ready for this season. It's amazing. But you look at what he did over the summer. Nothing. And when I say nothing, and I don't mean that flippantly. No, he couldn't. He had a broken leg. Yeah. So this isn't a guy that's prepping in the gym every day. This is not a guy that's skating every day. This is not a guy that's working to compete for that first game of the season. It's not a guy getting ready for training camp. This is a guy walking. That was a big achievement. Remember that? We were talking in the summer. Oh, he's walking with a lot of crutches. Like, that was a big deal. Right. And then you go into training camp, oh, well, guess who's not going to play any games, not going to work out, not going to skate, not going to be a part of anything during training camp, and then play the first game and go play it all, which is amazing, uh, in and of itself. And I go, well, it's going to take him forever to get back. It's going to take him months. To, and then once he gets over it, you still got to be afraid of a guy coming in behind you and hitting you. Yeah, or, you got to get over the mental side yeah, as much as I'm anything. I'm going to get hurt. I mean, I can't go all out. And then, not to get past that... Then you are, are teasing with a franchise mark of points in a season on top of all of those hardships. Absolutely stunned. And he, if he is not um, the, not only the master and candidate for this team, which he clearly will be, if he is not the front runner for this trophy, I don't understand the trophy then. To me, it's it would be an injustice if he's not at least a finalist. I, again, the, the, the nominees have not been turned in yet, so uh, we don't know. We don't yeah. know what's going to happen there. I haven't followed that side yeah. of the NHL to know what the compelling storylines are, but Chris Letang maybe yeah. returning from sh- a I mean, stroke. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they're going to be things like that. There, there are compelling stories in other markets, but I, like Clayton Keller, will tell you, it took me several games to really feel right. He averaged a point per game in October, <laughs> in in the first month of the year, and we said that Those all first time. Games, we, we were saying that he was quietly a point per game guy, because we didn't, you didn't notice him, but he still be, be a point per game guy. And it's interesting you brought up Letang. And I think there are stories, and there are sidelines, and, and you're, you're going to have to compare these stories. But one of the things on the award is the perseverance, sportsmanship, and the dedication to hockey. I think what the Keller story tells you is his dedication to hockey yeah. and what he has done to put not just his life back together and his health back together, put the game of hockey back together. And, and I think— And improve. And, and, Take it yeah. to another level. Yeah. His career numbers and not just career, like the best that's ever happened in this state of Arizona. Like that to me, that with this franchise moved from Winnipeg to here, this is potentially going to be, at worst, the second best individual performance in the history of the franchise and very likely the 
best offensive output of any player to ever put on a Kachina. Yeah, he's how on is a 13 that game not, one streak. How is that not a dedication <laughs> to hockey and perseverance? It literally is his picture when you look at the list of things that, that qualify for this award. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I don't really have anything <laughs> more to add, but Nay in the chat makes a great point, is that you see how Hayden has benefited from playing Everybody has. Keller. Everyone has. Everyone Everybody who's has. ever on a line with him this season yes. has d- gone better. And I think that's something that shouldn't be overlooked as well. You can look on the stat sheet and see his 81 points, but look at the guys he's playing with in the seasons they're all having yep. as well. I mean, Barry Hayden is a borderline 20 goal scorer. Nick Schmaltz already is. Um, it's just crazy to see what he's accomplished this season. And, hmm. and I agree. And I don't vote on this, so I have no real say, but he should be the Coyotes nominee and he should be at the very least, in my opinion, and this is biased because we're a Coyotes podcast, but he should be one of the three finalists when it comes down to it. That Keller Hayton thing is a side story at some point that we'll have yeah. to tell because they live together, they're roommates. And they do. I, yeah, 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 yeah. And I asked Kels, so is, is that relationship like big brother, little brother, mentor, or just friends? He's like, it's probably all three. It's big brother when I have to yell at him for leaving his shoes by the door <laughs> or leaving a messy kitchen. <laughs> I'm glad to know. I can I can see Keller being kind of a neat friend. I like that too. Like I I relate me. to that. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh man, um, but yeah, it, it's just unbelievable what he's done, and, and he deserve he deserves this. And these are two, the the awards we just talked about, and the guys we just talked about. These are two guys who have to be in the conversation, and I really really hope they are not just in the conversation, but as part of the nominees. But this next one's going to be a little bit more of the conversation because I don't know if any of us three are going to step up and say he should be one of the three finalists, but he should be considered in the voting. And Craig, as and I know, isn't Jack Adams voted on by the GMs? No, that's the Vezina. Oh, the Vezina. Yeah. Okay. So when, as someone who actually votes on NHL awards, how many do you fill out? Like it's five. So you're not. It's not just one through three. You're filling out no. one through five. Yeah. So. That being said, Coach Turnye, and you brought this up on a post game show a few weeks ago. Should he be on some people's Jack Adams ballots? I, I think he will be. I, I, I already hear buzz about him nationally, probably more buzz than I hear about Matthias Pichelli. Um, Jeff Merrick has brought it up a bunch of times. Jeff and Elliot Friedman have talked about it. I've, I've heard other people talking about it. Um, I think I think it helps having people like Paul Bissonnette and the national media to, to shine the spotlight on what's happening here and what Andre has done. This, again, we've said this a million times, and sorry to keep repeating it, but there were a lot of people that thought this was one of the worst rosters ever constructed in the cap era. They're not playing like it, especially at home. They have 20 home wins this season. They are overachieving, and you, you, ha- you can't just hand the, the credit to one person. Obviously, the players are doing their part as well, but Andre has them believing. Andre has them competing hard every night when this team has no chance to make the playoffs. That's really hard to do to get your team up every night to get them to buy in. And part of it is the culture that he creates. And I I know you hear that word a lot, culture. What does that mean? Well, in his case, it's relationships. This is a tight team. You guys saw it. You were at practice tonight, today. They're they're having a blast on the ice. They're having a blast with their coach. It looks fun to be out on the yeah, ice. Yeah, they were laughing Trinity. and smiling yeah. and yelling, but in a good way. How, how do you put a, a, a value on that? But they're enjoying playing hockey, even though the Arizona Coyotes are in a rebuild. Yeah, it's interesting to me because when you look at the Jack Adams, right here, I'm going to be as honest and frank as I can be here. Do I think he's going to be a final three candidate? No, I, re- I really don't. And you're looking at guys like Jim Montgomery, even Dave Haxall, who went from a team that was yep. out of the playoffs to into the playoffs this year. You look in Vegas at Cassidy. There are guys that have taken their teams and they are at the top of their division. I understand that. I get it. But what, what Andre Turini has built here in two seasons, you look at a team last year that they're, they were at 57 points to finish the season. They're two wins away from beating the 70-point mark. If they win three of their five at home, and by the way, that's dual because it's San Jose, it's at, Anaheim, and it's Seattle, and they're that's at home. That's all you have to say. <laughs> th- this will be the third best home record since the team moved relocated from Winnipeg. The third best home record for a team that right now has more players called up from Tucson at, at this point in the season than any other time during the year. They lost a bulk of their roster at the trade deadline, and they were supposed to finish last before those things happened. Yeah. So you take all of those things into account, and you go, oh, yeah, that's what a coach does. And then the biggest part for me is every interview we've ever done, every player we've ever talked to, every walk in and talking we've done, everyone has said what a great job this coach does, what a difference this coach has made. 
for this team. And that, to me, is the telltale of, okay, this is a coach that's making a difference. And I'm t- I promise you right now, and I won't name names, but there are teams right now that if you pull their 20 players, they hate their effing coach. Yep. Sorry, they hate them. And they're playing well in spite of them, not because of them. <laughs> or to Calgary. <clears throat> it but, wasn't Petey who said it. But... But that's a true thing. And if these guys will go to war for their coach. I, and I talked to Christian Fisher a week ago, and Fish said, nobody better said it, say anything bad about Bear. For a player to say that about a coach yeah. speaks volumes. And he still has them playing in a responsible fashion on the ice. I could, I've seen coaches that are your friend. They're not successful either. You can be their buddy. You can be their friend. You still need to be their coach. Oh. So he has been able to find that mix where – He's got them all believing, and I tell you what, that's the hallmark of what you want your coaching staff to be. He sets those parameters. I just want to see him on some ballots. That's it. Yeah. I get it. He's. I, I understand to be coach of the year, you need to you need to get in the playoffs. You really do, and I understand that too. So that's my bet. I think he is he is what he has done here, phenomenal, and he still does it with a smile. He still does it with hard work. And I talked about this before when Dave Tippett went through a rebuild. Dave Tippett would come into the coach's room and throw stuff, literally throw stuff. <laughs> so angry with what he's been given. That's not how, and, and that's not a knock on Dave Tippett. I love Dave Tippett. I think he's an outstanding coach. I'm just saying that frustration level, Bear doesn't do that. Bear comes in and goes, okay, this is what I got. What can we do today? What can yeah. we? And he comes in with such a positive attitude that he's able to make it through times like this. And that's when, when Dave Tippett finally goes, okay, we, we're not going to win. We just need to make him better. That's when he was able to flip the script and make it a more enjoyable place to be. Because if the rink's no fun, you can't win. You cannot win. Okay. And, and I think that's a big reason this team has won more than they were expected to. I, I'm, I, not only one of the reasons, the reason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll put two two of the reasons this team is where they are. One is goaltending that played above their expectations for the first 50 games and the head coach. Yeah. And he'll still bark at him. I've heard him bark. Absolutely, because he walks that line yeah. of yeah. You, you can have a relationship and like and respect the people you work with, but you can still be the guy in charge. Yeah, there, that's the fine line. You, need, you don't need to be an ass. You don't need to demean and, and belittle people. You can still command with authority without being a jerk. And I think that that's the fine line that people need to find. And I tell you what, today's athlete, today's professional athlete, today's professional hockey player, they need that fine line. You can't yell at players like you did back in the nineties. You can't. It's different now. It's more, hey, good job out there. Everybody gets a trophy. There's an element of that. So you have to be able to get along with that player as well. And, and Andre walks that line. And the other thing about Andre Tourney is he's a humble guy. Um, and today at practice, we asked him how, and this was a really great question from Petey because he kind of hinted at the Jack Adams conversation. But all in all, the question was, how do you evaluate yourself? And this is what Coach Tourney had to say about that. I always really critique in my job. I think you, you, you need to be, and, and it's not negative to be critique of yourself and to second guess yourself and say, I should I, because th- there's rarely a decision where it's 100%. You know, there's, you, you're looking at every decision like a 60 40 or 51 49, and you're kind of a, should I have done, should I do this or should I do that? And then you take a decision. But it's not like it was black and white and it was a no-brainer sometimes. So, you know, I, I second-guess myself every day. And for the guys who are not used to work with me, sometimes they, they wonder what's going on because I second-guess everything and I second-guess myself. But, you know, the, what people think of my work and everything, that's is something I cannot control. I, 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 I try to be as professional as I can and do my job. Hockey coach are the only collective sports where the coach is behind the bench. It's behind the player. All the other sport, the coach is ahead of the player. That's that's because there's a reason. Hockey, our coach belong behind the behind the player. So I will stay behind the player. The thing that I love that he said, and he's so he he like well, every practice he says like one profound thing that I'm like wow. Um, hockey is the only sport that the coach stands behind the players. Every other sport, the coach stands in front of the players. And I just thought that was a really, really interesting, interesting sentiment. And when he pointed that out today, it was really cool. And speaking about his humility, that that stood out to me. He today. told you that the coach should stand behind the players, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's really awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I've never cool. heard that before. Very, very cool. Well, we appreciate uh, Coach Cherney for his insight. And we'll have more uh, from Coach Cherney on talking about Keller and, and 
Spitelli on the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. So look out there as well. Um, you guys, I have had a setback in my furnishing of my house because I had a um, car, an unexpected car expense. Oh, yeah, that's right. That has set me back. But that's okay because I have earmarked the pieces for more furniture that I want to buy. Um, I don't know if you can hear that dragging on, on the show. If you can, apologies. <laughs> a lot going We're on at here Four at Peaks. Peaks. Um, but yeah, more, I mean, more furniture, they've really helped me. In Maybe this. they're moving furniture. They are, but Sounds it's, like it. it's not Well, Leah was moving furniture. Early. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. Leah was moving furniture earlier because Ow. Leah didn't like her seat. So we okay. had to, you know, oh my I think God. we auditioned we a few a more bar, stools. bar stool. If we had a yeah. more furniture bar stool for bougie Leah. He just bought more, new bar stools for more. I did. And a new couch. Yep. So I'm telling you, we're all, all our homes are furnished by more. It was more. like Goldilocks for a while there. Yep. Not too hard. Nope. Too soft. Uh, nope. Okay. wonder where she right. gets the bougie from. But save big it's on contagious. the best furniture in the valley when you head to morefurniture.com. That's M-O-R. Furniture.com. And if you want to watch the Arizona Coyotes continue to... Um, perform beyond expectations you can do so in person for the final few games of the season um, and when you do you can get your tickets on the game time app you can save up to 60 percent off when you buy your tickets last minute and the best way to support us is by buying with the link below in our description you can also buy your parking passes on there and listen mlb's back so you can buy your d-backs tickets on there as well and at chase field like you can buy there's like nine dollar tickets on game time on day of like hour before the game it's unreal um so definitely check out game time if you haven't already okay i know everyone's waiting for the punishments and we will get to it i oh, promise yeah. in like five minutes yeah i but, don't know if everybody's waiting for it but really quick i am because i shaved so yeah, I'm you're good. Yeah, i don't even know who you are really quick just while we're on the subject of nhl award predictions we're gonna just run through and, boom, we're gonna, boom, boom. and we're gonna talk about this again later when the season ends and the nhl yeah. awards are actually coming up but we might be there for the award show we may no you can't think you just have to answer okay. your predictions for are the we following predicting or who we want to win they're two different things who's who you think is gonna, gonna win oh, okay well oh, oh no you you can let's go with who you want to win who you think should i'll do i'll do leah sets the parameters i just said the ones i think will okay let's go Okay, heart, Craig. Can I do it in Bill Walton's voice? Sure. Connor McJesus. Um, McDavid. I literally don't get I mean, I understand who Bill Walton is. McDavid. Not even close. All Done. right. You can give it to him now and, and save five minutes at the award show. Norris. Eric Carlson. If you but get 100 he, points, you got to get it. Yeah, but but he, that's all he does. All he does is get 100 points. Yeah, but... You but, heard it right here. It, the, the name of the position is defense. <laughs> you need to defend. <laughs> it's Kale McCarrigan. It it's Kale McCarrigan. Carlson's going to run away 50, with this. 50, it shouldn't be, though, because he doesn't fucking defend. All right. Well, I also have Carlson. Um, Vesna, PD first. But Eric Carlson's minus 16. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, that ain't defending. Vesna, PD. Vesna, um, Allmark, Boston. Yeah. I also have Allmark. Linus Allmark. Love it. Where do you right. used to play? Buffalo. Yeah, you better put Sabres legend in front of that. <laughs> 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 All right, Calder, I'll go first. Beneers, we already touched Beneers. on. Yeah, we already all said that. Beneers. 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 This is actually the one I have my notes, and I didn't even write anyone down. I mean, if we just want to stick Boston, I'll go Don Sweeney. <laughs> he is definitely in the running. He has made some, I mean, look at Billy Garen in Minnesota. That's, There's a team that's right now first ooh. in the Central Division. They're dealing with 13 millions of cap with Suter and Parisi still on their books, and they're still able to win after losing one of their goaltenders and trying to ride with Mark Allen. I feel he's not doing it. They built a team around it with cap challenges. I go Billy Garen. You guys just named two of my three finalists. The other one is Ronnie Francis. There's I like Seattle. that one. I like that one. I, I was thinking Ronnie Francis too, what they've done over the last season, how they were able to build, and everybody was disappointed. Garbage, oh, they didn't make the playoffs last year. Garbage well, team and now they're, yeah. Yeah, they're now they're team. there. So, yeah. There you go. Was that all we needed yep, to do? That's all we needed to do. Uh, okay, show's over, right? My throat is oh, literally wait. constricting. <sighs> oh, you going my first? stomach is You might as well go first. Flipping. And then, because he just left. He's leaving the show. No, I'm not leaving. I'm oh, just making he doesn't want vomit I'm not getting on him. thrown up on. <laughs> All right. Can I go first so it's done? Like, like, just to dive back into your past for a moment. Have you actually been thrown up on? Has that happened to you? I mean, you went to college. I'm, so like, probably. I'm starting to feel ill. All right. All right. So just to recap. 
So I don't need to think anymore, right? Week, like, no, I don't you, need can no, you can close your laptop. So last yeah, week, actually, can you put mine like under plastic or something? <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> throwing up here. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, it's gonna be Place your here. bets now. Who's throwing away, up first? away. Get everything out of here. All right. So last week oh, we boy. had. Look at we got a crowd oh forming God, now. Yeah. Somebody's gonna throw up. I don't I'm not like getting it on this. Me. Okay. Last week for we did a PHNX Community Day. Um, in which we were raising money for Ryan House, which is an amazing, amazing charity that does, that does great work. If you miss Community Day, go check them out. Ryan House, if you can, make a donation. Um, like I said, they do amazing work for, <laughs> for children and, and their families and just terrible situations. So we did that as a company. We raised over $6,000. It was an unbelievable achievement. And we did a little wager with the Sun Show. Who could raise more money? And thank you to the PHNX Coyotes community because we raised the most money of any show. Um, and we're so proud of that. And as a little kicker, we made some promises. PD promised to shave Cheers his beard, beard, which he Gone. did. I promised to take a shot of pancake syrup. I will not disgrace maple syrup by calling this maple syrup. Half shot. And Craig said he will do a beer bong of IPA. As we all know, Craig loves his IPAs. Mm, um, so we are paying our bets yeah. here. Uh, and we'll just we'll start with Sean because Sean also oh, made a promise. Let's see, I, I was, I was ready to go and then you said you were going first. No, you go first. Okay. I'm putting this off. All right. Um, as many of you know, I have had very <laughs> vocal opinions about uh, the marsupial known as koala bears in the past. <laughs> Um, I just, this is very tough for me to say. I've been lying this whole time. I actually am like a, a just every fiber of my being. Like, you know, it's closet koala guy. My mom, my <laughs> sisters, and then like koala, koala bears guy. up here. Um, I just, I really love koala bears. And it was, I, you know, I had to stop hiding it. And, uh, <laughs> there it as is. you see here, this is my new Twitter. Uh, my name is Sean DePaz and I love koala bears. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody gives a lot of love to kangaroos and all that. <laughs> Trash. They just don't have, they don't have it like koala bears. No, I mean, look at how cute those things are. DP, is that legit right now? <laughs> your Twitter? Twitter. Twitter. Can you Go ask Mac if that's allowed, by the way, on your Twitter bio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one, I didn't lose my check mark for changing this, so I think I'm, I should be I good. I love koala bears. But okay. I do. Right. I, my name is Sean so, DePaz, and I love koala bears. So one bet is paid. <laughs> Two bets are paid. Two, I paid mine. Oh. Okay, can I go next, please? Yeah, you I'm can getting... go next. All right, so... I literally don't trust you Wait, wait, wait. All. You got to show what's on the shot glass, too, by and the way. And he's making me use an ASU shot glass, <laughs> which is just horrible. Oh. They're applauding. Yep. Boo. We're Saul. Uh, all right. I'm gonna. I, mm. Look, it's not moving. It doesn't it's move. Look at the top. Look at the top. It's like gelatin <laughs> on the top. It's not, it's gonna be like this is going to make you any show. better. I I'm not sure it's even syrup. actually going to leave the glass. I, I love syrup. I'm it. not that bougie, but the texture of it makes me want it. Disgusting. Oh! 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 God, that's rotten. Oh! Oh! That All right, good. Leah. That is not good. All right. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I need to move my laptop. I'm not getting yeah, fear on it. I don't trust it. him either. Just oh, look at the leave foam. That was a bad pour. Oh. I made a very big mistake there. All right, Craig. Oh, boy. Uh, we got an, a hazy IPA and hazy Four Peaks IPA here. Craig? Yeah. Are you ready? No, because I'm worried that like when I pull the so hose out right here, here, the bottom's coming out and it's going all over the so floor. So we'll, we'll see. Which wouldn't be a bad outcome, actually. First but time there's been beer on the floor at Four Peaks, I would Actually, imagine. I'm going to have you pull that out while I hold the bottom in. Pull the straw out. And here we go. <laughs> IPA. Oh, boy. Where's, where's Johnny Venerable? Wow. All right. Oh, man. Work, Promise work, work. Hey, fulfilled. Craig. Work, oh, work, that work. That is disgusting. Yeah. Oh, man. I need to drink some. Wow. Wow is right. Um, that's why I'm drinking. Yeah. Anyway, we, we did it. We fulfilled our bets. Um, and thank you all for tuning in. And if you missed the beginning of the show and you see this little thing in the bottom left and you're wondering, what is that? We launched a brand new shirt. Yes, uh, we did. A PHNX Coyotes and Four Peaks collab shirt. It's now live. Grab yours at phnxlocker.com. I love this one. It's a play on the reverse retro. Here? We got the Four yeah. Peaks mountains on there. Four it's amazing. Bones. You can buy this right now, and this right can now. also be your shirt. If you're signing up to become a diehard, you can choose this as your free shirt at sign up. And you'll want to buy this now because, because we have our season wrap party at the Four Peaks H Street Pub before the Yote season finale on April 13th. It starts at 5 p.m. Wear the shirt, and we'll take over Mullet Arena. So wear it, and uh, you'll receive special Drink. drinks all night long. And um, before we wrap up, 
We're gonna bring the people in. Come here. Come, come here. here. Come Chris, here. Charles, Chris Elliot, Kenny. Yeah, I think Chris left. Back in there. Okay, there. Chris left. They're coming on the show. All right. They want some in. diehards El- over here. Is a di- get him on, Kenny. Come, come on, get him in. Get him in. Bring him in. Bring him in. There's Kenny. Come on, Kenny. CWP. Charles. Charles hey. Beverly's here. <laughs> Came all the way down to Four Peaks. Join the community. This is what you get. This is amazing. Um, we appreciate you guys. And look, he's rocking the Cody. All right, you guys want some syrup? <laughs> 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 I can smell it all over me. So I'm gonna wrap up. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to PHNX Sports on YouTube, and you can follow all of us on Twitter at Craig S. Morgan, at Leah Merrill, at S. Peters Hockey, at Sean underscore DePaz. Follow the show at PHNX underscore Coyotes. Thanks again, everyone. Off tomorrow, we'll be live for post game on Friday. But until then, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye. Bye. Bye.